Mihai's granddaughters liked to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aeon Ignatius Raphael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shilaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot when the royal family was ousted and Arugia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess. And I found out later, she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arugian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in our regular force to clean them out. 
For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Operations complete. Stand by at the front. Some welcome. All aircraft spread out and attack. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. Sharp as attack, aren't you, Spare Aid? Regular forces can reduce losses if you tenderize the base first. If you can't handle that, just fly and be a target. <laughs> we're being attacked. Enemy aircraft. All squadrons. Ready the anti-air interceptors. Open fire. Affirmative. We'll do what we can. Transport truck spotted. Not a threat, but feel free to take them out. You're hitting three locations. Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rob them of their ability to respond. Use those empty heads of yours. If you die too fast, you will even be useful as targets. What are the odds of getting out alive? That's for you to figure out, Spare 7.
plan all along or something? Battle doctrine. Something happens, they tell you what to do next. Osea has one. And Bone says where and when pawns like us will die. You mean they already know the next strategy? Hold up, hold up. Let's make a bet. Whoever guesses the next strategy wins. You can get in on this too, Bandog. Maybe you guys need to cool your heads off in solitary. Let me look into this doctrine thing. And you're the loser. Bribe is all you need to look into a terminal. It's amazing how many people write their password on a note by their desk. Gathering intel is all about getting access.
To scurry back to the base trigger, I'll give you that. they were never born. You guys get a pass. Damn right. I wouldn't be surprised if we're thrown in solitary too. Hey, who wants to bet who goes into solitary? That's what that gambling nut job would say if he was still here. <laughs> Caution. Hold up. Caution. Where's your sense of humor, guys? Your buddy's making a joke. Laugh already. You lost planes, but the mission succeeded. However, some of you crossed the return line for supplies and for repairs. This will result in solitary. Take them.